If you read this Second Amendment carefully, it would be great. I mean, I wish there was something, you know, very, very clear in the Second Amendment that this was the right of the people, not just like the military or something like that. I mean, it's too bad that they didn't put any language in there that was very, very clear. But wait a minute, they did. How do we miss this? See, people like to take the Constitution, try to make it so confusing and so difficult to understand. It's very simple. The Founding Fathers understood that. They made it simple for us. They made it easy to understand. The problem is it has been twisted over time. And so let me give you some of the twisting that has taken place over the last 15, 20 years in our culture. Uh, when Clinton and Gore were in office, they loved running around the country and saying, support our gun control measures. Don't worry, Bubba, we're not gonna take away your shotgun. That was their big mantra. Oh, you're still gonna be able to hunt. F folks, the, the second, if you listen to those guys, and you listen to the people that constantly use that excuse, we're gonna take away your this or your that, but you're gonna be able to hunt. It's almost as if they think the second amendment says, a well-regulated pheasant hunt being necessary to the security of Duck Dynasty, the right of the people to keep their arms shall not be in French. But that's not what it says, right? It doesn't have anything to do with pheasants. It has everything to do with freedom. Not pheasants and not hunting. It's about protecting ourselves. But of course, they get it backwards. They, they tell us that we don't even have an individual right to bear arms in the Bill of Rights. That the law-abiding citizens, law-abiding Americans have no unconditional right to firearms access. The idea that the Bill of Rights guarantees each individual a right to own a gun is a constitutional illusion, they tell us. The sale, manufacture, and possession of handguns ought to be banned. Banned, I'm telling you. We do not believe the Second Amendment guarantees an individual right to keep them. The Austin un-American statesman says there is no constitutional guarantee for private ownership of firearms. Now, this is the mantra out there, and it is growing right now because of this response to the school shootings. Why does this even matter? Why does it matter whether it's an individual right or a group right or a, 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 a law of nature that is yours or, or something else? Why does that even matter? And the reason it matters, friends, is because there is evil in the world. And the question is not whether or not evil exists and whether or not it will be used to perpetrate crime. The question is how do we respond to that evil when it occurs? How do we reduce the level of school shootings and other crimes that happen in our country? What do we do when the wolf is at the door? The real question is how do you best deter and minimize that evil? How do we respond whenever it turns into criminal violence? I know some people out there say they just, you know, get rid of the guns. It's the gun culture. It's, it's the fact that there's too many guns available. Somehow this inanimate object is causing these things to happen. You have these, you know, guys like Bob Costas that get on television and say the problem is the gun. If we can just get the gun out of the equation, it wouldn't happen. In fact, he said brilliant things like this. Gun, it's a gun culture that almost always leads to tragedy rather than safety. Far too often, bad things happen than things where the presence of a gun diminishes or averts danger. He even said, I cannot think of a single instance involving a professional athlete whereby that athlete having a gun averted or diminished a dangerous situation. Not even a single instance? I mean, I can throw a rock from my house to multiple instances, including Colt McCoy when he was the quarterback at the University of Texas before he was a professional quarterback where a crazy stalker came to his house and he had to use a brandish a weapon in order to stop this guy that had a gun from perpetrating a crime on Colt and his roommates. We see it in the, well, not in the news, if you really dig hard, you can get the stories of a good guy with a gun stopping a bad guy with a gun over and over and over again. Just a couple of weeks ago, the Maryland school shooting that the media doesn't want to talk about because instead of this guy able to go and kill as many as he wanted, he was stopped by the good guy with a gun, the resource officer that was there. So we see that happen. And of course, if you read the studies, John Lott's got a great, uh, Professor Lott did a, a whole study on how guns are used five times as often to stop a crime as they are used to commit a crime. So that means statistically every time you take a weapon off the street you're actually might be stopping one but now you're allowing five others to actually take place. So the data backs this up and of course the anecdotal evidence even the Sutherland Springs incident that happened right there in Texas the bad guy with the gun was stopped by Stephen Williford the good guy with the gun an NRA instructor using what kind of weapon? an AR-15 to stop the bad guy with the gun. And I loved watching the few interviews that this guy did, how humble he was. I, he, in fact, here's what he said. He said, I'm no hero. I'm not. I think my God, my Lord, protected me and gave me the skills to do what needed to be done. I just wish I could have gotten there faster. You know what former 
Vice President Joe, I love saying former when I say that, by the way. Oh, what uh, former Vice President Joe Biden said about it, said he shouldn't have been allowed to have had that weapon to stop that crime. So let, let's use that logic. So he shouldn't have been allowed to have the weapon so that the crazy guy could take his massive arsenal that he had and go to the next church where he was headed to do the same thing that he had done to the first church at Sutherland Springs. That's the logic of these people that want to blame it on the inanimate